be talking about something called as the cloud service models. So the first one is infrastructure as a service that is IaaS. So in this particular model, you're going to be basically catering or you're going to be uh, taking care of the uh, servers, the networking, the firewall, security, data center, and the entire physical, uh, you know, hardware behind it. And you're going to be taking care of the network security, all of this. The operating system is going to be your hassle, all right? And now an example for uh, infrastructure as a service is a virtual machine. And uh, so in coming to a platform as a service in platform as a service, all you do is you've built an application. You go to a cloud service provider. You say, I have my application to deploy it. All of the other things behind the scenes are taken care by the cloud service provider, the servers, the storage, the networking, the firewall, the security behind it, the data center, the physical plan of the building is taken care of completely by the cloud service provider and also the operate uh, the operating system and the development tools and database management uh, systems and like all the business analytical uh, tools that you would be required are also going to be taken care of by the cloud service provider. So you have the uh, access to operating system and of the other development tools and you know the um, core tools in infrastructure as a service. So in infrastructure as a service, you're going to be taking care of the servers, the network. Uh, so you're going to be taking care of the operating system and you're going to be taking care of all the development tools and uh, the cloud service environment is going to take care of the servers. It's going to take care of the uh, data and uh, the data center, the physical plan. And up to an extent, you're going to be taking care of the network and security, the firewalls, etc. But yes, the cloud environment is also going to the cloud computing. The cloud service provider is also going to uh, help you with that particular task. So let's come to software as a service. This is something we've all used. I am sure we have used this. So in perfect example for this number one is Google Drive and Microsoft 365 OneDrive. So what you do is you it is not your application. You've never seen the code running behind Google Drive. You've never seen the backend services. What you do is you go to Google Drive's website. You start uploading files. Now what you take care is only of the uh, particular say for example the data and the access and all of the other things that is the website host, uh, the, uh, the website that is hosted the frequent updates the features to the website. Everything is taken care by the cloud service provider in this case Google in the case of Google Drive Microsoft in the case of uh, 365 uh, the Microsoft Office 365 OneDrive. Now, so these are the cloud service comparison. So in uh, infrastructure as service, it is very flexible in uh, pass that we call this platform as a service. You can focus only on your application and deployment. You don't have to take care of the infrastructure in SaaS. What you can do is you have a pay as you go pricing model and you just use you just pay for how much you're using. If you're using 200 GB in Google Drive, you're going to be paying for 200 the 200 GB plan and it's going to be based on a subscription model. So this is a shared responsibility model as you can see in software as a service you're going to only be provide you're going to be paying for the data and the, you're going to be managing the access data that's going to be uploaded onto google drive is yours the people who can access it you are going to decide through the share option whether you want to share it as a link whatever now there's also another concept called serverless computing in serverless computing instead of paying for those resources okay and if say for example you have a virtual machine that is like a virtual computer that is up say 24 bar 7 so you're going to be paying for that uh, virtual machine 24 bar 7 instead of that doing serverless if you have a block of code that runs only based on an, based on an event instead of you paying for checking that event as well say for example a tweet you're going to be doing this hands on uh, in couple of minutes so say for example there's a tweet that you someone to with a particular hashtag you want to capture that tweet instead of running an entire service behind the scenes paying 24 bar saving scene if someone has tweeted this or not instead of that what you can easily do is you can only pay for the the time and the uh, you know amount of processing power your code uses to run for a particular time period that is you have a tweet that is you know been tweeted and you pay only for the amount of actions the time and processing power the storage power that you would require for your code to run for that particular you know few seconds or minutes so you're, gonna, you're only going to pay for that and that's called serverless computing and azure you have something called as azure function and logic apps now the security measures for uh, applications on the cloud number one the data breaches are avoided by encryption methodologies and also it secures important data threat detection fraud prevention cyber security frameworks network monitoring and also endpoint monitoring are some of the services that are implemented by the cloud vendors that is the cloud service providers to ensure the security posture of the company's technical environment Now the scope of cloud computing. Why is cloud computing such Prajwal, a big deal in today's world? Yes, ma'am. Hi, Prajwal. Uh, can you just tell me uh, how how many more slides you have? Uh, ma'am, I have uh, two or three slides, and we have a five-minute small uh, hands-on. Okay. I uh, just request you to maybe if you could skip the slides, put the hands-on. 
Uh, okay, yes, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Okay, uh, so one second. So uh, the scope of cloud computing, right? In very brief, there are around two million cloud computing jobs that are out there in the current industry, and about half a million people who are graduating from any engineering college are actually unemployed. And what we do at Cloud Attack also is we try to bridge this gap and we try to revolutionize the way people learn tech through actually teaching people via a very fun mobile game. So we teach people cloud computing using end game, and I can proudly see that we are live on both Google Play and App Store. You can download the app and you can learn more about cloud computing from the particular app. So now let's move on to the hands-on very quick. So the first hands-on is going to be actually hosting a, web so a website on Azure Cloud. So I'm going to be just sharing my another screen here. So here I have logged on to something called as the Azure portal. So this is the portal behind Azure. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to so I have logged on to this and in the particular document you can see how to create an Azure account and you can also look into how you're actually going to be able to deploy the entire website. So I'll give you a quick hands on here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to search for storage. here. Okay, so there's something called as a storage account. Click on it. It's going to load something as this. Okay, and now here, um, so just a second. So I'm going to be going to create a resource, and you can search for storage account here. Okay. So here you're going to click on storage account. And you're going to click on create. So you can read more about this. It provides very detailed uh, information and also the Microsoft official documentation provides a lot of detailing, uh, de you know, information about this. So very fast. What I'm going to do is I'm going to configure this for me. Okay. Okay, let's do one thing. All right. So now the region that I've selected is East US, but since I am in India, I'll be actually selecting India here. Okay, so I'm going to be selecting South India. So that's the region I'm selecting, and I'm going to go be going with the standard one. So I'm going to be selecting locally written storage to save on costs. I'm going to be going to advanced. Okay. And you can leave all of this as it is. You're going to enable public access from all networks. I'm going to go to data protection. You're going to disable all of these because again, it's going to only result you in a little, you know, higher cost. You're going to come to tag encryption, leave it as it is, come to tags, and then review and create. So here it's running something called as a final validation. And once it approves of this, I can easily create this particular resource. Here I have it. So it's initializing deployment and it will be created within seconds. So as you can see, I do not have any cloud computing. I do not have any uh, you know infrastructure with me. I'm sitting at home. I just created a storage account. I created a place where I can store data. So deployment is in progress. This will take a few seconds. And as soon as it is done, we'll be able to see that this particular resource is deployed. In the meantime, I would like to take you to some to hands on lab two because this is going to take a little time to deploy. So the hands on lab two, I've designed this using the logic apps designer and this I've designed only to show you the power of cloud computing. So as you as I was telling you about serverless, so logic apps is basically a serverless service of Microsoft Azure. So what here I've done is when a tweet is posted with a hashtag cloud attack on Twitter. Okay. 
I'm going to analyze the sentiments behind it, and I'm going to see whether, since I am, you know, uh, I belong to Cloud Attack, so I'm going to be seeing whether people have any good reviews or bad reviews about Cloud Attack that they're posting on Twitter. And every time there's a tweet, I'm going to be uh, calculating the sentiment for it, and I'm going to be inserting it on as a row in Google Sheets. So let's see how this actually runs. So this is the designer, all right? I'm going to be running this particular Logic app. Okay, so it successfully checked the trigger, and now I'm going to be going on to Twitter. Okay, so one more good thing is our uh, cloud, uh, our storage account is also configured. Now what I'm going to do here is on my Twitter handle, I'm going to go with hashtag cloud attack. Say for example, is an awesome app. All right, so hashtag cloud attack is an awesome app. I'm going to be tweeting this particular tweet on my Twitter handle and I'm using the hashtag cloud attack, you know, hashtag that I had mentioned in the logic app. So I've tweeted this out. Okay. Okay, let's just see. It's an amazing app. Okay, so I have tweeted this. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to do something called as again. I'm going to just run this particular trigger. Okay, so it's successfully checked it. And if I come here, you can see my in, uh, Twitter ID is NH Prachwal. I the tweet that I had tweeted was nothing but cloud hashtag cloud attack is an amazing app. Sentiment positive. This means that this is a positive statement. This means that uh, I as the customer I'm happy with it, and it gives me some other details as well. So this was the power of cloud computing. Sitting at home, I can analyze the tweets that people are doing about my company, about my services. I can see whether they are happy with it or whether they are not. And now, since our storage account is configured, we'll actually host our website as well. This is hands-on one. So now I'm going to come to containers. Okay, I'm going to click on create container and the name of the container I'm going to give is called a website. So this is any name, you can give anything you like. So I'm going to be giving it as website. So I'm going to go to this container. So I'm going to come back, go to resource. So I'm going to go to this container. I'm going to select it and there's a button called change access level. I will be clicking on that from private. I'll be getting it to the last option container uh, container anonymous read access for containers and blobs. So I'm going to be clicking on OK. OK, so the access for that is changed. I'm going to be coming onto the website going to click on upload. And uh, I have my file explorer open here. So in the particular document or in the website uh, of Tinkerpreneur, you're going to be easily able to find this particular index.html file. You can download it. Now the name has to be index.html. I'm going to upload it. What if I tell you just by this much, right? This took me seconds of time. My this web page that I uploaded, right? Index.html, it's live. I can actually share this link with you guys and you can actually go ahead and view this website. So what I'm going, going to do, I'm going to click on the file. I'm going to click on the, I'm going to copy the URL. I'll open a new tab, paste this URL. There we have it. My website is live and I tell me I've just hosted my first website on Azure cloud and I can install the cloud app for much more fun experience. So this is a small web page. It is live on the storage account. Yes, it's not my domain, but I can also change the domain. I can attach it to a www.com domain, whatever I want. And just in seconds, okay, without having any servers behind me, without even having any IT infrastructure except a computer and an active internet connection i was able to do two things number one i was able to run an ai model a sentiment analysis model through which i was able to see whether the things that people are tweeting about my company is positive or negative i was able to actually host an entire web page on the azure storage account and i was easily able to actually generate a public url that anyone perhaps anyone can actually use and the entire world can now enjoy this particular website so that my friends was the power on cloud computing and that was the session on cloud computing. So I thank each and every one of you for your patient listening and I would entertain any questions that any of you have and I would be more than happy to answer any questions on cloud computing. You can leave them in the live session chat or also in the comments of this particular video. Thank you so much. That was really a delight to listen to you talk so passionately about cloud computing. I'm sure, uh, you know, with the basic steps and the basics that you've explained, many kids will now 
start uh, understanding cloud computing and learning it, applying it, even use the cloud attack uh, app and that you've made. Uh, thank you so much for your time and for sharing the content for this. Uh, from on behalf of Hotel Innovation Mission, we are really proud of you and we thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pam. And I would like to thank AIM and Nitya together for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much. Thanks, Prajwal. Have a great evening. Bye. Have a great evening, ma'am.